Yeah, there's a sizable group of uh, people, uh, including scientists and philosophers, some, who uh, look at out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, as we all recognize those are real in terms of people's perception, but they, they believe it to be um, a, a critical data point to assess theories of consciousness. Uh, from your perspective on the science of consciousness, from a materialist point of view, how do you look upon those who would take out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, as indicative that consciousness goes beyond the physical? Out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences are fascinating. Uh, it's a question to be asked about how prominent they are and what are the causes for, for those phenomena. But uh, they definitely uh, pose an interesting test case for what we think about consciousness. And I'm not sure that it can arbitrate between theories of consciousness that are within the realm of physicalism. Right. But I think that may, many take them as maybe proof or evidence in favor of a non-physicalist sure. point of view. So what can a physicalist like me <laughs> say when facing these types of evidence? Um, so one thing is that we know that many of these experiences can be induced by physical um, means. So I can, for example, um, stimulate areas in your brain. I, I think uh, it's not my field of study, but I seem to remember um, claims about the um, parietotemporal um, junction. If you uh, stimulate that, then people have an out-of-body experience. If you give people ketamine, they also report uh, out-of-body experiences and so on and so forth. So, uh, and people also have, you know, other explanations for the, um, these near-death experiences relate to things that are to, to things that are related to the differences in oxygen intake in those times. That could be related also to glutamate and so on, which is also what the ketamine works on. Um, others claim that it's related to rapid eye movements that are increased, and that might be uh, relevant to mechanisms that are also appearing in dreams. So we have different explanations that are well within the physicalist realm that can account for these phenomena. Now, does it prove that they are physical? No. Does it prove that they can be physical? Yes. So now I think the burden of proof is on whoever wants to make the claim that they are um, definitive evidence for the non-physical. Because now that people have showed you that these experiences can be recreated using physical tools, then I think that to the very least should evoke doubt in the validity of these experiences as evidence for non-physical factors. Certainly as, uh, as uh, definitive uh, evidence, but the, the argument would be that the, the causation of it is caused by these extra physical things, but naturally there has to be some physical representation. So they would say that uh, if you have activity in the parietotemporal junction or wherever, th that that is just a, a, a result, not a cause. That would work for spontaneous cases. But when I stimulate it and I create it, then I'm the cause. There is no non-physical cause that started this. Well, I mean, you can go out on extreme. There's, you know, it's something called uh, you know, emergent dualism is where you, the dualist theory, this is a very small segment of dualism, right. the dualist theory is that, is that once you have the, a, a certain collection of physical things right. that out pops right. a, a non-physical element which is needed to, to, to make the conscious experience. You can even go farther than that. You can hold parallelism uh, yeah. and say that because world created the perfect, like God created a perfect world, yeah. then there are two parallel yeah. chains, causal chains, that are completely parallel, that would always be in harmony, where every change in the physical is paralleled by a change in the mental and vice versa. And there's no causation. And there is no, <laughs> but then if you're within that framework, then there is nothing I can show you right, to course. persuade you otherwise. So there is beautiful work by uh, Nancy Kahn-Wisher and Joseph Parvizi showing that you can still stimulate a neuron and make people see stuff, have a conscious experience of a face you just push or your of eye. color. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course, but even, even without doing something like that. But then the parallelist would say, well, of course, you just created now a two, uh, like a, a parallel event, one in the physical world, one in the mental world, 
and there will be no way to prove that parallelist right. Which is why I think that the question of physicalism, dualism, idealism, and so on and so forth, is not a scientific question. At the end of the day, each one of us has their own belief, conviction, and they would interpret whatever data right. I would provide in light of those beliefs. So now, I don't, think, I don't think that it's something that should not be discussed. You have philosophical tools that could help you maybe make progress in, the, in that question as well. You can show inconsistencies in one of the ontological stands as opposed to another. But I don't think any scientific evidence, whether it's neural stimulation or near-death experiences, that could finalize this debate.